Hello, Special Olympics Kentucky volunteers. Welcome to the 2022 Summer Games Volunteer Orientation. I want to begin by saying thank you so much for registering to volunteer for this year's Summer Games. We are very excited to be returning to a two-day competition format, and we are over the moon to be welcoming our returning volunteers as well as our new volunteers this year. So we're very excited and hope that you all are looking forward to the experience. I want to first take a moment to highlight our sponsors for the game. These individuals, these companies do an incredible job of supporting us and ensuring that we can provide a high quality competition for all of our athletes and coaches and volunteers that are coming to take part. A lot of these sponsors contribute, but also contribute in a volunteer format as well to supporting the game. So all together, we're very grateful for our sponsors and the volunteer presence that will be there um, that weekend on campus to help provide competition for all of our athletes. So let's dive into a few basic details about the game. We will be returning to a two-day format for competition this year. So competition and event setup in competition will begin on Friday, June 3rd. And then a full day of competition will take place on Saturday, June 4th. The location is Eastern Kentucky University in Richmond, Kentucky. And the time is dependent on your volunteer assignment. So I'll address this a couple of other times uh, throughout the orientation. But here are your basic details for the game. So again, event setup will begin on Friday, June 3rd. Our team does arrive to campus early and begin preparing for the game. So if you are an event setup volunteer, your volunteer date is June 3rd. And then also, if you will be volunteering in a role to help with competition on Friday night, again, your role will begin on Friday, June 3rd. The rest of you, your volunteer date will be June 4th. So competition will be taking place in a total of five different sports, track and field being the first. Softball throw is an event that takes place within track and field, but is wildly popular amongst our athletes, so it has its own dedicated venue. Rhythmic gymnastics is the second sport. Swimming, soccer, and bocce are the remaining sports. So as you can see here, track and field will be taking place at the Tom Samuels track on EKU's campus. Softball throw will actually take place on the Turkey Hughes baseball field. Rhythmic gymnastics will take place in the Alumni Coliseum on the main floor. Swimming will also take place in the Alumni Coliseum in the natatorium. Soccer and bocce both take place at the intramural field on campus. This is a parking map. So this resource will be shared with you in all future communications about the game. So this is something that you will have access to as you prepare to arrive for your volunteer experience. We wanted to take some time to highlight various points on campus that are important for the game um, and also to help prepare you for the day up. So as you can see, uh, each competition venue is labeled on the map. So here is the Tom Samuels track where track volunteers and field event volunteers will go for their volunteer experience. This is the Alumni Coliseum where swimming and rhythmic gymnastics will be taking place. This is the Turkey Hughes baseball field where softball throw will be taking place. And then located in this area of campus is where soccer and bocce will be taking place. We're at the intramural field. On this map, available parking is identified by the green spaces. So anywhere that you see green are available parking spaces throughout campus. And as you can see on this map, it may be a little difficult to read in the presentation, but again, you'll receive this in all future communications and be able to look at it much closer. But in each of the green parking areas, we have designated the specific volunteer venue that this is closest to. So for example, the Alumni Coliseum lot down here, track, swimming, gymnastics, 
Olympic Town, and Healthy Athlete volunteers are welcome to park in this area. So this is a relatively central location for all of those specific areas. And over here, we have designated several different lots for soccer and bocce. So here is one option and a couple of others right here. These are much closer to the intramural field where bocce and soccer will be taking place. And again, a couple of other lots that are going to be available and we've identified the Disney lot, for example, is ideal for track. Track and bocce can park here in the Van Hoos lot. So, also, if you are going to be an Olympic Town volunteer, your area is right here, and it is actually the upper portion of the Alumni Coliseum parking lot, but this area right here is designated for Olympic Town. This also brings up another good point. Red areas indicate areas that are closed for parking, so you can see that that's identified here. And then again, for this upper portion of the Alumni Coliseum lot where Olympic Town will be taking place. So your attire for the game. Summer games, obviously taking place the first week in June, the weather can be a little unpredictable. So the most important thing to remember is that you come dressed appropriately, but make sure that you're comfortable. It's going to be a long day, possibly in the heat. We could experience some rain. So you'll want to ensure that you're in clothing that's light and comfortable, shoes that are comfortable because you'll be on your feet. Um, so casual athletic style clothing is absolutely appropriate. So shorts, t-shirts, tennis shoes are highly recommended. As I mentioned, the forecast can be a little unpredictable here in the state of Kentucky. So definitely check the forecast all the way up to the very morning of the event. And it's never a bad idea to have things like a raincoat or an umbrella available in your vehicle if you were to need it, maybe a second pair of shoes or another shirt to change into in the event that you were to get wet and we did experience some rain. Those are just sort of tips that we have learned over the years that are never bad things to sort of come prepared with. Closed toed shoes are highly encouraged and recommended for all volunteer areas. Uh, this is just to ensure that you are safe um, and that we can protect your toes from any large objects or anything that could possibly be dropped or anything of that nature. So closed toe shoes are highly, highly encouraged. If you have a soaky t-shirt, so special Olympics Kentucky t-shirt that you or jack, rain jacket or anything of that nature that you would like to wear, we would absolutely encourage you to do so. And as a volunteer, both for Friday and Saturday, you will receive an event t-shirt. So all volunteers, Friday volunteers and Saturday volunteers will receive a summer games t-shirt. And many of our volunteers do choose to change into that t-shirt once they arrive. You can kind of keep that in mind as you're planning your apparel for the day. So arrival time. We do ask that you please arrive on time. The actual time that we will ask you to arrive will vary upon your volunteer assignment. So please ensure that you read your email carefully because that is where we will clarify exactly when we expect you to be there and ready to go. Um, you should have received the ideal arrival time in your confirmation email, but you will continue to receive email communication from me between now and the time of the game. And I will reiterate your arrival time in every email. So please, please, please read your email carefully to know exactly when to expect to arrive. It is possible that things could have been adapted between the time of your sign-up and the communication that you will receive moving forward. So again, just read all future emails to ensure that you have the correct arrival time. When you do arrive on campus, you will park and then report to your assigned competition venue. So you will go directly to the area where your volunteer experience will be taking place. That is where you will check in with the venue director or lead personnel. Every one of those individuals will be in a navy blue shirt that will help to identify them. You will check in with them and then any training or briefing that you need to be set up for success for the day will take place at the time of your arrival. Lunch will be provided on Saturday, so please note we will not be providing food on Friday. We do ask that you eat before you come. 
but on Saturday, we will provide lunch. It will be a Chick-fil-A sandwich, chips, and a bottle of water. So event expectations, what can you look forward to? Well, first, you can anticipate two action-packed days of competition. So if you're there Friday evening, if you're there Saturday, it's going to be an action-packed day where athletes are going to be very excited and very antsy to get started. So you can definitely anticipate a good time um, with plenty going on all throughout campus. We will have a smaller number of participants than what we traditionally see prior to COVID, but we do have more athletes participating this year than we did last year. So if you are a returning volunteer, you will see a higher number of athletes. We have still some adaptations to the format. Again, we're returning to two days of competition, so that is more of our traditional format for the game. We are going to still have an adapted opening ceremonies, however. So that will take place Friday evening. Typically, we would gather in the ravine or an alumni coliseum, and you would see all athletes that are competing there with their family members, and there would be an athlete parade. It's going to look very different this year. It's going to be a much shorter um, version, and it's going to take place um, in a different part of campus. All of those details we will share later once they are officially finalized. They can tell you that it's going to be an adapted opening ceremony format. So if this is something that you have taken part in in the past or you have seen um, and you are there on campus to see it this year, you will notice that it is going to be adapted from what it typically looks like. As I mentioned before, when you arrive, you will go directly to your competition venue or your volunteer assignment, the area where your experience is taking place, and you will be greeted by a venue director or a lead volunteer. So they will be there again in navy blue shirts, and they are the ones with the experience sort of leading the specific area that you are in, and they will guide you through the entire day. So they're there to provide training upon arrival, but also to guide you through the entire day. We do ask you remain flexible and adaptable. We are still very much returning to competition and still making our way back to what our traditional summer games would look like. So there are still some adaptations that we have made along the way. There are still some moments where it may be necessary to sort of think quickly and adapt on the fly. But again, your venue director or the lead personnel that are there will guide you through all of those moments. But please know that your ability to remain flexible and to adapt um, are definitely highly appreciated anytime that we go into a summer game setting, but especially knowing that we're still making our way to returning to a traditional format. This is going to be of utmost importance that everyone is sort of ready to remain flexible and adaptable the day of the event. You can also expect to have a memorable experience. Summer Games is our most and highly anticipated event of the year. It's our largest event of the year. So athletes, coaches, even our volunteers very much look forward to it. There really is nothing that compares to the atmosphere, the energy that you feel all throughout campus. So you can definitely expect to have a memorable experience spent getting to know your fellow volunteers and the athletes that will be competing. Many moments of celebration like this picture shows moments of joy like this picture shows and just overall appreciation, gratitude, enthusiasm like this picture shows many, many, many moments that are just happy and joyous and enjoyable for all. So definitely look forward to a great weekend. Here are a few tips that I would suggest for anyone that may be volunteering for the first time. As I mentioned earlier, check the forecast even up until the morning of the event because you never know, it can change overnight and it's never a bad idea to be well-informed and well-prepared. I absolutely would encourage anyone, whether you're volunteering Friday or Saturday, to bring a water bottle and snacks if you would like. Again, we will not be providing a meal on Friday. We will provide lunch on Saturday, but having access to your own drinks and your own snacks throughout the event, you are welcome to bring your own things and having access to those things is Great. So please ensure that you bring that with you if it is something that you would like. Sunscreen, sunglasses, hats are all great ideas to help sort of beat the heat and prepare to be out in the sun all day long. So please try to be mindful of preparing to bring things like sunscreen and sunglasses to ensure that you're able to protect yourself. Plan accordingly. 
leave early that morning. Make sure that you have plenty of time to make your way over to campus, find an appropriate parking spot, locate the venue that you need to go to and get checked in and briefed. When you arrive on time, it just ensures that you have plenty of time to be well briefed and well prepared for your volunteer experience by the venue director. And some will wait till the vast majority of their volunteers have arrived to begin that process. So that's why we say plan accordingly, plan to live, arrive a little earlier, make sure that you have plenty of time to make it to your spot and to get there on time. We do ask all volunteers to try to limit their cell phone use while they're actively volunteering. There will be moments where there are breaks in the day and in obvious times where it's appropriate to check your phone because obviously we understand that many of you may need to be in contact with others for a lot of very important reasons. Um, but when you are actively volunteering and competition is taking place, in your designated role, we ask that you limit cell phone use while you are performing your specific volunteer duty. And then come in prepared, ready to interact with the athletes, get to know them, match their enthusiasm. They're going to be excited to be there. There may be some moments of frustration if they're not performing as well as they would like, but encouraging them throughout that is definitely a wonderful way to show them support and also just enhance your experience altogether. Another tip that I would suggest with an athlete interaction is try to refer to them as athletes. Many of our athletes are over the age of 18, so to use the term kids is not always appropriate because many of them are legal adults. So I would highly encourage you to use the term athlete when referring to a group of participants, to a group of our athletes versus the kids, for example. And those are just a few tips that are uh, great ways to ensure that you have a wonderful time taking part in summer games. So communication, what can you expect moving forward? A little later this week, you will get a detailed email from me and I will outline specifically your volunteer venue, your volunteer role, I'll provide the parking map, I will detail your arrival time. So you can expect a detailed email later this week coming from me providing all of the additional details that you may need. Um, and a lot of it will be a quick reference to the information that I've covered throughout this orientation. Then, leading into the week of the games, you will get a reminder email several days before the game. Most of it will include the same information that I provided in this orientation, as well as the same information that I will detail in the email that you get this week, but it will be a standard reminder email that will go out the week of the game. And it is done automatically through our volunteer registration system. So it may look a little bit different in formatting, but it will reiterate a lot of the same details. But you can expect a reminder email the week of the game. Myself, along with the rest of the Special Olympics Kentucky staff, will actually be on site in Richmond beginning Wednesday, June 1st. This is when we will arrive, unload, and begin preparation. So you can expect delayed response from me via phone and email beginning Wednesday, June 1st, because we are actually already on site starting to get things underway to prepare. I will have access to my email, and there is a phone number that we will have for all of you in the email where you can call and get a hold of our staff directly there on campus. But please know that my response still, even with that phone, may be a little delayed because I will not be the primary staff member that you will get on the other end of the phone. So we will receive messages, be told who we need to call back. I will be able to check my email, but not as often as I do in a typical workday. So just know that you can expect a little bit of a delayed response. Also, for any updates or any major changes to the schedule, if we do encounter any sort of inclement weather or anything that could possibly impact the schedule, then we will update via email and also our social media pages. So I highly encourage all of you to follow us on social media as an additional way to ensure that you receive any pertinent information that may impact your volunteer experience as we move closer to the game. And then, of course, here's my contact information. If you have any questions, concerns, anything that you feel like you need to share or ask, please do not hesitate to contact me. This week, I will be in the office all week long, so I will be available via email and phone. 
Um, it is likely that you may end up catching my voicemail, but if so, please know that I will call you back as soon as I can, but I will have regular typical access to my phone and to email for the duration of this week. So please do not hesitate to reach out if there's anything that you need. Please know that our entire team is so grateful for all of you and your willingness to share your time um, with us to help us provide an incredible experience and a high quality competition for our athletes. And we really can't wait to see you out there. If you need anything, reach out and we'll see you soon in Richmond. Thank you so much.